Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and today on our Beyond Omega Level series, we're going to be discussing one of the biggest threats the DC Universe has ever faced, the Anti-Monitor. So as we always do here, we'll start by explaining the Anti-Monitor's origin, and then get into his powers and his abilities. So, the Anti-Monitor was created by Marv Wolfman, George Perez, and Jerry Ordway, and made his first full appearance in Crisis on Infinite Earths issue number 6 in 1985. But the Anti-Monitor's origin has actually undergone some changes recently, so we'll look at the origin story as it is still for the last 30 years, then we'll get into how it's been changed. So the Anti-Monitor's origin dates back to the creation of the Multiverse, which started on the planet Maltus, home of the Owen people, back before they became the Guardians of the Universe. Now it was there that a scientist built a machine to show him the origin of the Universe. Now as you might expect, the experiment goes awry and the machine explodes, and the Universe is broken into several splinter universes along the way with an antimatter wave. Of course, as most of you guys know, this scientist was Krona. Now within the Antimatter Universe lies the planet of Quart, which would be home to the Anti-Monitor. Now, the Anti-Monitor quickly conquers Quard and the entirety of the Antimatter universe, and also learn the existence of his counterpart in the multiverse, the Monitor, and the two of them begin to fight for a million years before they enter a sort of stasis for billions of years after that. Now, the Anti-Monitor's origin was tweaked a little in Final Crisis in 2008, which revealed that both the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor were creations of the Over-Monitor, which sent a smaller Monitor into the multiverse as a probe to explore it, and it eventually split into two entities, the Monitor, which personified positive matter, and the Anti-Monitor, which of course, personified antimatter. Now, even more recently, Scott Snyder's Justice League run has altered the Anti-Monitor's origin yet again, revealing that the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor are brothers, and that they, along with a third brother known as the World Forger, are actually offsprings of a super celestial known as Perpetua in the Sixth Dimension, which up until that point was not known to exist, and basically serves as the highest plane of the multiverse, existing beyond the concepts of time and imagination, and accessible only to Perpetua and her offspring. And it's also been said that if any of them were to die, they would be born again into the sixth dimension. So yeah, his origin, which was already pretty complicated, has gotten even more convoluted over the years. But regardless, onto what his powers are, and like many of the characters that we cover in this series, his powers are basically everything. He possesses matter and antimatter manipulation, super strength, near invulnerability, and reality warping. Now with a character this powerful, we can only really get a sense of how powerful he is if we look at what he's done. And because the anti-monitor is so powerful, he isn't a character that's been used that often since his introduction. Because bringing him in too often kind of cheapens the character, so he's only shown up when the stakes are exceedingly high. Now, during his first story arc, Crisis on Infinite Earths, he not only kills Supergirl, but he defeats Superman without breaking his sweat, and that's significant because we're talking about pre-Crisis or Silver Age Superman, which is vastly more powerful than his subsequent versions, so being able to beat him so handedly is an impressive feat in and of itself, but that's not even the most impressive thing that we've seen the Anti-Monitor do during that crisis. We also saw him absorb the total energy of the Anti-Matter universe and also destroy and absorb the energy from most of the positive matter universe as well before traveling back to the beginning of time where he fights a contingent of 50 of Earth's most powerful heroes with enough power to destroy an entire solar system but they're unable to do any meaningful damage to the anti-monitor before he absorbs the energy of all of them which gives him nearly enough power to remake all of reality. Now it takes the power of the Spectre, one of the strongest entities in the DC multiverse to fight the anti-monitor to a draw and the fight between the two expelled so much energy that the entire multiverse was destroyed destroyed, giving way to a single universe going forward. After that, the Anti-Monitor then relocates the resulting Earth to the Anti-Matter universe in an attempt to destroy the only remaining remnants of the positive matter that's left in existence. Now eventually, the Anti-Monitor is defeated by the Superman of Earth 2, Alexander Luthor of Earth 3, Superboy Prime, and Darkseid when he's punched into a star by Superman. Now we can see, just by looking at how many insanely powerful heroes it took to defeat the Anti-Monitor, that he's a ridiculously powerful entity, and with the number of universes that he's destroyed, he's almost certainly the character with the highest kill count in the history of DC Comics. Now, following the events of Crisis, we see the Anti-Monitor in extreme moderation, but we can still see him pull off some pretty insane feats, including surviving an explosion that could destroy the entire galaxy, defeat the Guardians of the Universe, and withstand an assault of the combined forces of all the various Lantern Corps without any ill effect. The new 52 version of the Anti-Monitor is also able to wield the Anti-Life Equation and use it to coerce any being to do his will, and is able to unite the Black Racer entity with the Flash, which he then orders to kill Darkseid. So yeah, that is 
basically the anti-monitor. Obviously a multiversal threat, so obviously well beyond Omega level. And like I said, he hasn't really made very many appearances, but in the few times that we've seen him, we've seen that he is ridiculously powerful. But let me know what you guys think, and let me know in the comments who you guys want to see me cover next in future videos. If you guys are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys want to see my uncensored videos, my versus videos, early access videos, all kinds of crazy videos, my comic book review show, my, my own personal podcast that comes out a week early, live Q and A's. If you guys want to win Rob Core rings, make sure you guys head over to patreon.com slash comics explained. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace. We've got some new patrons in our top tiers over on patreon.com slash comics explain. I want to give a shout out to Jason C, Austin S, Austin H, Philip, and Austin B, as well as Steven Z, Eagle F, Joey M, and Jeff R, as well as Genosis916. As always, we just usually keep the last name to an initial. It helps you guys to maintain your anonymity. Some of you guys have expressed concern about having like your first and last name thrown out there for the world to see. I do not blame you. For you guys who have joined up as part of our Patreon tiers that are eligible for Rob Corps Honor Guard rings. Those whose rings have been sent out, you should already have them. If you're a new person who just joined up and you've been part of this tier for a month, your ring will be mailed out to you. So I want to say thank you guys for being patrons.